So in the last video linked right up here, we went over how to take your MPC and turn it into a workstation hub at the center of your studio, allowing multiple producers and multiple artists to control different instruments all at the same time. But in this video, we're focusing more on you as a solo creator using your MPC, but being able to access multiple different instruments on different tracks from one MIDI controller all at the same time. This is done using a feature called key mapping where we're able to allocate specific parts of our keyboard to certain tracks so we don't have to flip through our tracks at all on the MPC and we can just play the keyboard and come up with some good creative ideas. Now I find this really helpful when I'm trying to come up with ideas because instead of having to flip through different tracks on the MPC, I have the bass, the keys, and a solo, and the drums all accessible at the same time because I never know where my idea is gonna start, if it's gonna start with a bass line, if it's gonna start with the drums. So this allows me access to all of those different sounds all at the same time. It's really easy to set up, it'll be a quick video, so let's just jump right in. Before we actually get in on how to set everything up, let's just take a look at the overall project and what's on each track. So there's four tracks in this project. On the first track, we have some drums. Track number two, we have some keys. Track number three, we have a bass. And track number four, we have a solo lead. Now, as it stands right now, whatever track we're on, the keyboard is going to be triggering the pads just as the pads are going to be triggering the keyboard. But like we did in the previous video, what we're gonna first do is go in and start allocating where the MIDI input is going to be designated. So on track number one, by default, it's on all ports. We want this to be none. So we only want the pads to control the drums when the drum track is selected above. Now we're gonna go to the second track and take it from all ports and bring it to the complete control 32. The same with track number three. And the same with track number four. So now if we were to actually hold shift and record enable these three tracks, this keyboard is now controlling all three of these tracks. Actually pretty cool for sound design, but we're gonna do a little something different. Now over here is your key range of which track is responding to what keys. So we could go and just click on this and change the value, but right below that is an actual learn function. So I'm gonna start with the bass because I want the bass all the way as low as possible, but I don't want it to go above this C note right here. So I'm going to click on learn for the highest part and then just hit the note. And as you can see, it's recognized it at C2. Now let's move on to our keys. Now I want my keys to go from the C sharp here all the way to the E right here. So in order to do that, I'm going to click learn on the lowest section, hit the note, click learn on the highest section, hit the note, and now we have our keys are mapped just to this section. Let's take off the solo so we can just hear these keys. And once we get down here, the keys aren't going to play. But if we hold shift and activate the bass, now we have two instruments on separate parts of the keyboard. And up here, it is nothing because we haven't allocated the solo to that section. So this is the last note for my keys. So I'm gonna come down here to the solo and I'm gonna say, what is the lowest note that I wanted to respond? I'm gonna go to this guy right here and now, but nothing below it. That means when we activate all three of these tracks, we now have three different instruments all simultaneously be controlled at the same time from this keyboard. We have keys, bass, and also a lead. Now that makes it really easy to lay down ideas quickly without having to touch the screen at all. You'll notice though, if you were just to hit track number one, it's gonna automatically arm that and none of these tracks are still armed. So as it was before, if we have all three of these already record enabled, all we have to do is hold shift and hit track number one and that shifts the focus 
to the pads right here to control track number one, but it doesn't deactivate the record enabled on the other tracks. And then we can just record enable that. That means we have drums up top, bass on the lower half, keys in the middle, and then our solo right above. And now we're ready to lay down an idea. So I'm probably gonna start off with some bass and keys, lay down some drums, and then try a little solo over it. Let's see what happens. Here we go. There it is. I hope that helps you understand how you can use key mapping on the MPC to set up your own personal creative station. This allows you access to all those sounds all at the same time. And if you have a bigger keyboard all the way up to a full size keyboard, you can allocate a whole bunch of different sections of your keyboard to different tracks on the MPC. So if you watch the video all the way to the end, thank you so much for all your support. It's your support, your comments, your likes, your subscriptions that keep this channel going and growing. On that note, thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Go remap your MPC so you have all the sounds at your fingertips and go make something cool.